Okay, YouTubers, um, I'm going to talk about getting about double the life from your golf cart batteries or heavy duty batteries. And this goes for anyone, anyone using golf cart batteries for like RV use or uh, in a golf cart or in a sweeper, they use similar types of batteries. These are deep cycle batteries, or most of all for people in solar power systems. Now, a lot of times in solar power systems, the charge controller, if it's an advanced one, is going to take care of some of these things for you. But let me just go through these really quick. And this is coming from somebody who sold new batteries from every brand out there worked with all kinds of batteries um, of, every, of every make, all the expensive ones and the cheap ones. Let me tell you what I find out. One, buy cheap batteries and check the weight. Um, the weight is, the, is one of the big determinants of the quality of the battery. More lead, there's uh, more lead to last longer. Now, there, is some things that, there are some things that the battery manufacturers can do, like decreasing the antimony or reducing the stiffness of the plates. Um, U.S. battery and some other ones do some more advanced work with plates, but by and large, buy the cheapest battery you can find. Do not waste your money on Trojans that are going to cost you, I mean, when I was selling them, they were $125, and, and I could sell batteries for $89 that did as well or better than the $125 batteries. Multiply those, that $125 to $80, let's call it $90 difference, so that's $35 times six, that's basically $200 difference. You're not getting anything extra. Um, so buy cheap batteries and check the weight and you'll know you'll, you'll be getting a decent battery. In fact, I found a lot of problems with Trojan batteries. They did not do very well um, in terms of longevity. So the other thing is you want to equalize your batteries every two to three months at a minimum. Now automatic charge controllers sometimes will do this. On a solar power system, more often than not they say they will, but you have to double check. Equalizing means you're hitting the batteries with uh, a much higher charge than normal. So let's say you're on a typical golf cart battery and a battery setup that may be 36 volts for golf cart batteries. Solar power systems are 12, 24, or 48 volts. Your equalizing charge, as opposed to, <clears throat> let's say, a 36 volt battery system, um, when it comes off a charger, could be uh, 39 volts because um, it's nominally 36. It's really each each battery instead of being let's call it 6.1 at a low state, might be 6.6 .6 or 6.7. So you're gonna be in the neighborhood of 40 volts when you come off a charger, maybe even a little higher. Well, an equalizing charge might even go up as high as 43 and 44 volts, depending on the systems and how sophisticated. So it's gonna yank, it's not gonna leave you with batteries at that state for a 36 volt system, but it is going to drive higher voltages. And that serves to in some sense repair the cells a little bit, but more often what it does, and more importantly, is it prevents the batteries from sulfating over time, and that's what happens. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit here. Um, so if you equalize the batteries, then you're going to find that your sulfation problem doesn't come on as quickly as it normally will. With a long, deep cycle battery, around two years, maybe three, you're gonna start seeing sulfation problems uh, and sulfation problems will lead to a very quick death because what happens is when the sulfate accumulates on the plates, plates get hotter, hotter plates degrade quicker, more, uh, more quickly, and you're on a slippery slope right away. So if you can eliminate the sulfate early on, you automatically get a lot more life out of those batteries. They don't experience the heat problems, and the plates don't warp, and you don't find the plates uh, forming what are called hairs at the bottom, basically, and those will short out the cells just a million times better. If you have a charger that doesn't have equalization, then you got a problem. Um, you're going to want to get one that does have equalization, uh, the ability to equalize the charge, or maybe charge the batteries on a 12 volt charger, you know, two at a time in series, 12 volt charger, so you can equalize those sets of batteries every every so often. Most people aren't going to yank their batteries out of golf cart, so they're going to want to charge it on that 36 volt charger, or if you have a solar power system, the kind of the same thing. But most of the higher end solar power chargers, um, the, the, not the PWM ones, although they sometimes have it, but the MPPT ones definitely have an equalization charge. But you just want to make sure that it's a good one, because I've seen some of the programs, and if you have a 24 volt system, um, you can push, I mean, you could easily push, you could really get away with 30 volts to the cells. You don't want to run them a long time like that, but you can get, get away with 30 volts to the cells, and so it'll really top off the 
the volt, the batteries, because you'll end up with uh, batteries that are going to be running at, well, 30, let's say 7.1 volts, something like that, each battery, as opposed to 6.1 or 6.4 is about average. So 7.1 volts, um, and will help the help the batteries quite a bit over time. So let's go to the next one. This one is probably one I don't I don't know that I've ever seen anyone say it. Um, and it's so freaking simple, it costs you absolutely nothing and will do miracles for your battery system. You want to rotate your batteries. When I would go out there and help, you know, check out a battery uh, cart and see you know, what cells I could repair and replace and, um, and renew, I would almost always find that your positive side, where your positive is connected to the, to the, uh, the system, was the one that degraded first. So, and it makes perfect sense because that's the one can you know uh, contributing the most initially. So what you want to do is, I mean, do it whenever you really want to. If you do it once a year, uh, every year, it's ten times better than never doing it. I rotate my batteries uh, about twice a year um, for my solar power system. So I'll move. I'll just basically they're all numbered, so I'll just rotate them. So number one will go to where number uh, well I have eight batteries in my cell, so number eight, and then eight will go to one, and just I just rotate them in a circle effectively. And what that means is that I'm not going to lose one battery or two batteries on that side quickly. They're all going to degrade degrade at the same time. And very often, what I found with golf cart batteries was one battery would die and then the other batteries would start to go quickly because they were making up for that one battery. So if you, don't, if you don't lose that one battery, you automatically raise the life cycle of the whole system. You're not just talking about one battery anymore. You're talking about the six battery system or the eight battery system. So rotate those batteries. It's free to do. It doesn't cost you a dime. And I guarantee you, between equalizing batteries and rotating batteries, instead of getting three to five years, you're probably going to be out five, six, and seven years. Now, of course, if you overuse the cycles of your batteries or you drive your batteries into the ground in terms of um, uh, to, you know, d uh, getting it to too low of a charge. You want to ideally not run, especially on a golf cart, you want to ideally run your batteries no, no deeper than 30% every once in a blue moon. 50% is better. So if you run it at 50% or less, but let's just say 50% because you want to use the golf cart, right? 50% you're going to double the lifespan of those batteries. It's totally possible if you're not in a real hot environment. Um, the hot, hot, hot environments are much more uh, challenging to, uh, to the longevity of a battery because uh, the plates will warp more quickly and everything happens um, faster in hot environments. Um, if you're only decreasing the, your battery life to 50%, your charge rather, that automatically could give you double the life out of the batteries. And if you follow these, th these this advice, you're really going to be way, way ahead. Now, the next one is water those batteries frequently. If you let a battery dry out and then you charge it, there is almost nothing I could do for you as a person who would renew batteries. Um, however, if you just kept some distilled water, ideally, in the battery, just up to the plate, a little bit over the plate, not all the way up near the top, all you want to do is keep those plates covered especially during charging. Um, that's what your goal is. A little bit over, but not much. And also you want to give them enough uh, air space so that as they charge and as they off-gas and build up heat and bubble, it doesn't create a high pressure situation and you're not foaming over because when you foam over and you get water on the outside, it's actually acid. That's what degrades the terminals and the terminals then die. So on my batteries, where I just filled it up to the, just to the, right above the plates, just a little bit, when I charge them, and I've hit them with, as I said, equalization charges, I have not had that problem with my terminals degrading. Don't have any rust on them or anything. The other thing is using battery fluid. Um, darn it, I can't remember the freaking name, but there is one battery fluid out there that I used to sell. Everybody sells it at the same price. You could buy it from me, you can buy it from anybody else. We can't sell it cheaper by the rules of the company. But either way, even if you buy direct, you're going to pay the same price. Either way, get this stuff. It's a freaking miracle. What it does is it has cadmium in it. I tried to make this formula myself because I wanted to make it cheaper. I thought the company was ripping me off. Turns out they're not. Um, the cadmium is really expensive. But what it does is you put it in the batteries. Um, a little. I, I put in half of what they recommended. And then I just shook, shook them up, shook the batteries up a little bit. But half of what they recommended. And what you do is, when you charge these batteries, it will go into the plate 
on the charges and you discharge. And effectively, you are rebuilding the strength of the plate with the cadmium in there. So the plates become stiffer and more and uh, tougher and they will last a boatload longer. Not only that, there are chemicals in there that prevent the sulfation from occurring and will desulfate a battery over a couple of charges. It's super serious stuff. Isn't cheap, but when you're paying 100 and whatever, 120 bucks for your deep cycle battery or more, and you want to run it for five or 10 years, you buy a bottle of this stuff, and then, and I'm going to put the name of it in the uh, description. I apologize for not having it here. But you buy a bottle of this stuff, and you are going to um, just add a ton of life to those batteries. I mean, on my solar power system, where normally the batteries should die, well, let's say seven years. Solar power systems can have a pretty easy life. I, I bet you my batteries are going to go 10 or 12 years. I mean, I'm, I'm doing everything by the book and right. Um, I've even had some really bad discharge cycles, but I checked the plates and checked everything, and the batteries are rock freaking solid. Once again, I bought the cheapest batteries I could get. In this case, they are uh, Duracell batteries, who are, may be made by, uh, actually, I think Duracell is made by uh, DECA. DECA makes a great battery. Um, they may be made by Johnson Controls, or there's another company out there that makes a really good battery out of Ohio. But if you buy, if you can buy from Sam's Club, very, very good batteries, or Costco, very good batteries. So let's go over that from the top. Don't shop price on batteries. Just get the cheapest batteries, check the weight. If they're super light, then you're gonna have some issues. More batteries die from uh, people not taking care of them than from the fact that it was, quote, a cheap battery. So don't worry so much about the the uh, the uh, price of the battery. Get the cheapest one you can. That off the right off the bat should save you, as I said, about two hundred dollars for uh, six batteries. Equalize those batteries every two to three months at a minimum. If your charger doesn't have an equalizing mode, then either break down the batteries or just rewire a little bit and use a twelve volt charger that does have an equalizing battery, or get another charger. Now those chargers for golf cart batteries are pretty pricey, so you know you just have to decide whether it's worth it, but definitely equalize those batteries every so often and that will keep that sulfation away. Rotate those batteries. So pull out the pull out the one that's close to the positive and switch it with the one that's negative and just keep rotating the batteries around. Um, all of the different batteries should see the positive terminal at one point. Um, and I do it probably twice a year, or could do it more often, but twice a year is fine. And that's going to really extend it so you're never going to have one battery dying early. The number one, the other one is water those batteries. Because I've come across so many batteries where the, you know, the, basically the battery's cooked because somebody charged it when there was no freaking water in it and the battery just, just melted the plates. And then, so water the batteries only up to the top of the plate a little bit more just because you're going to go up, and up inclines and declines in a golf cart, but not any more than that. And the last one is use this battery fluid. I'm going to put the link down below in it. Um, oh, and one other thing. The report that I've got in the bottom of this, um, of this uh, video is also very useful and I would say anybody who's got golf cart batteries needs this report because not only will it keep your battery batteries going for a long time but you can find cheap batteries and renew them and anybody else who has like nickel metal hydride tool batteries or computer batteries um, I was really surprised that I could renew nickel metal hydride batteries so easily and also tool batter, uh, computer batteries so easily um, from this report. I did not know I could do that and I'll show you in a later video how I, you know, some of the information, but that report is very, very helpful and detailed um, for people who want to, uh, you know, buy cheap batteries and re renew them so that they can use them in their golf cart or solar power system, which is one of the things I've done or recondition their computer batteries and all that other kind of stuff. So I hope this has really been helpful. I do think it has um, been because uh, I'm, I'm able to save you some money and extend the life of your batteries. So good luck with that. As always, comment. Please like this video because everybody hates my videos because I want to make money from a report. I'm totally fine with that because that report helps people. But please like the video and um, I'll post more soon. Thanks.